All right, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, for those of you attending uh, for the first time, uh, this is FLOW Seminar, where FLOW stands for Faith and Learning One Word uh, Seminar that was created to provide a global online forum for the dissemination of the latest scientific research results in all aspects of faith and learning, included but not limited to disability optimization, uh, learning algorithms, privacy, cryptography, uh, personalization, and many more. Uh, so today, it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker, uh, Slava Mihansali, who is a PhD student at KAUST, uh, working mostly on federated learning, and today he's going to tell us more about uh, convergence of the first order algorithms for meta-learning. So uh, thank you, Slava, for agreeing to give a talk, and the uh, stage is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Sam, uh, for a nice introduction. Uh, as I mentioned, like my name is Slavo, and I'm working on uh, federated learning, stochastic optimization, higher order optimization. Uh, in this talk, I will talk about a specific part of machine learning called meta learning and its applications uh, for federated learning. If you have questions, feel free to ask them right away through chat or raise a hand. So let's start with introduction to federated learning. Federated learning uh, is a subfield of distributed optimization. Participants are devices and server, uh, and uh, there can be a huge amount of devices. Federated learning is specific uh, in fact that uh, all devices have their own private data, which tend, tends to be collected in different ways. So it's usually heterogeneous. Goal of devices is to train model on a joint data distribution, but due to privacy concerns, they are unwilling to send uh, their data to centralized server. So, uh, in, so it's not accept acceptable to send device uh, send send that data points away from clients. So, with this constraint, federated learning proposes following optimization scheme. So, uh, server. Uh, starts with initial model, which uh, which he broadcasts to clients. Clients com compute updates based on their own local data, and send updated model back to server, which aggregates it, uh, <laughs> which aggregates it together and initializes the next iteration. Algorithms in uh, federated learning differs in how are the clients sampled in each iteration? What computation is done locally? Uh, how are model, models sent uh, to server and to, the, uh, to clients? And uh, and how are how server aggregates model models? For example, in Byzantine setup, server can employ more robust aggregators. Common theme in federated learning is that the bottleneck of training is communication. Uh, so in practice, one often uh, compresses sent messages to reduce uh, communication volume or does more steps in between uh, communication round. So uh, in this presentation, we will focus on orthogonal aspect of federated learning, uh, which is personalization of local models. Uh, why personalization? Uh, it can uh, yield a lot of benefits. Uh, imagine that we are trying to solve a keyboard next word prediction on smartphones. Clearly, uh, ev every user uh, uses different vocabulary and there is no uh, one, uh, one size fit, fits all for the prediction and hence uh, uh, deploying same model for all clients can be way worse than uh, deploying more personalized one. Uh, by personalized model, we mean a model that is fine-tuned post-training by, for example, performing few gradient descent steps. And this fine-tuning is a form of personalization. 
So in, in this person, personalization uh, models, uh, like different clients, uh, employ models that, that, that works better for them. For clarity, uh, we will denote the model that we, have, we will have on server as meta model. And uh, we will denote it by X. And this meta model won't be deployed. On, on devices, and the models that are uh, that will be deployed on devices, we will call them personalized model and denote them by by zi. So, how can we do personalization? Well, there are multiple ways how to do personalization. One way uh, is as we mentioned before search for a meta model that is easily adjustable for particular workers. Adjustment takes place on workers after the training. It can be done by, uh, for example, a gradient descent steps or uh, a few gradient descent step, steps. And this will be focused on, on of our work. It is also called a uh, meta learning. And in, when uh, evaluated in, in practice, it performs very well, as it makes uh, adjustment, adjustments post-training. Post uh, it can be adjusted to uh, new clients that didn't participate in the training or new data points that were not available during training. There is a belief that this meta-learning generalizes also on previously unseen distributions. So uh, in meta learning, uh, the server like solves uh, try to find tries to find uh, the best meta model, and then clients run a few GD steps afterward to fine tune it for their their first personal needs. Other approach for personalization is uh, to let uh, workers keep their own local model throughout the training and to use meta model just for updating them. So uh, each client will have their own data, uh, data model. And uh, after training, it will deploy it without like further fine tuning. Uh, we, uh, well, we are speaking about like different ways how to do personalization. And we inten intentionally didn't mention uh, what exactly is the objective function in these scenarios? It is because it plays a certain uh, a central role and it requires a proper explanation. Uh, we will get to this in, in a moment, but beforehand, let's talk about literature uh, for personalized federated learning. Uh, Yes, so uh, there are many works that explore personalization for federated learning. We highlight just a few of them. Uh, uh, there are uh, like first three works uh, explore different personalization objectives, which are explicit. Uh, first uh, proposes novel objective, which mixes uh, local data loss and the similarity of local models. Second paper uh, analyzes this mixture model and shows lower bounds for convergence rate and algorithms achieving this lower bound. Then uh, the third paper uh, proposes framework that allows for flexible amount of personalization across workers. So uh, it allows different workers to make more or less personalized models based on how they are confident in their own data. Fourth paper uh, talks about pra pra practical aspects uh, of met meta learning and how can it, it, it be used for federated learning. Uh, they reimprint federated averaging as a meta learning al algorithm and show that fine tuning uh, can lead uh, in 
leads to improvement in accuracy in practice. Uh, we just mentioned uh, a few ways how to do how to do personalization. There are many more ways to to achieve it. Uh, there are papers from uh, like this paper from Mansur or from Kulkarni or from Tan that uh, <laughs> describes plethora of approaches uh, how to achieve personalization in federated learning. We would like to point audience to them. Uh, if you are interested in this topic. Now uh, we can uh, get to objectives uh, that can be used in meta learning. So in meta learning, we minimize a loss of meta models on meta function. Meta function uh, represents data loss on personalized models. Uh, these objectives formalize uh, fine tuning of meta model after the training. Uh, and like after the training. Uh, so what are the particular, uh, uh, we can show the particular examples of meta functions. So here we list uh, three, three meta, uh, three meta functions. Uh, by small f, uh, we denote loss on client i. Uh, and uh, here we evaluate it at a personalized model as z i, which is for different object, different uh, meta functions uh, have a different form. So the first one personalized personalizes. Uh, Meta model by performing one gradient step. Second one, personalizing by performing multiple gradient step. And the, the last one personalizes by uh, performing a proximal step. Why are we interested in this objective? Uh, yeah, uh, also uh, we can rewrite this proximal step. Uh, in uh, this, this this form, uh, so uh, it it simplifies a little bit. Uh, why are we interested in these objectives? First, two of them uh, works are intuitive and works very well in practice. And uh, the the last one, uh, this model envelope objective, is very similar to to the first two but it has superior optimization properties, which we are going to uh, talk about in a moment. But um, beforehand, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's stop and uh, give space for questions. So yes, let's so make I can't. Anybody, anybody has any questions, go ahead and ask. There's plenty of time. And sorry, Sam, for jumping in. I didn't realize we were about to say the same thing. And no worries. So there's a question from Michal. Let me just try to unmute Michal. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, I can hear you. I just wanted to ask whether we assume that the rocks can be solved, uh, uh. you know, in the F. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good question. Um, um, we won't need to solve uh, this proximal operator. We will just need to approximate uh, the solution, and which we, we which we can do easily. And we will show how to do it later. I see. That's fair. Thanks. Mm -hmm.
do we have any more questions regarding no. federated learning personalization meta learning There are no questions in the chat, no raise hand, so maybe you can continue. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, we mentioned that uh, the model envelope objective has superior optimization properties. What do we mean by that? So even, uh, so if we assume that our loss function is smooth and strongly convex, then the objective function of the the, uh, the meta function of mammal objective is uh, can be non-smooth and non-convex, and the same holds for multi-step version. And the problem is that when we do such nesting, then uh, it it loses these properties, smoothness and convexity. Uh, on the other hand. More envelope objective preserves smoothness and strong convexity with slightly different parameters. Why are these uh, smoothness and convexity properties important? Uh, we can illustrate it on example. When we run a gradient descent on a function that is smooth and strongly convex, we can show that it converges linearly which means that when we want to, uh, to find a solution that is in the epsilon neighborhood of the exact solution, uh, then we will need a number of steps proportional to the log one over epsilon. However, uh, when we don't have strong convexity, then, uh, then the convergence rate is sublinear and to get to the epsilon neighborhood, we will need proportionally one over epsilon squared, which is much slower. Thus, uh, these, assum these assumptions on objective function uh, can change uh, what, what guarantees, convergence guarantees, can we prove for our algorithm. And uh, so on and so forth. Well, one more thing that we need to uh, talk, that we need to mention when we are talking about meta function is that how can we work with them? So uh, na one uh, natural, natural way how to solve this uh, meta learning problem, our, how to minimize our meta function would be to run uh, gradient descent or HGD uh, using on these uh, meta functions. However, uh, there is issue that these grad gradients of meta functions are hard to compute. Note that uh, it is hard to express the gradient of this uh, model envelope. And it is also hard harder to uh, to evaluate the gradient of meta function of mammal objective and multi step mammal objective. If we try to evaluate a uh, gradient of this mammal objective, we will need to work with Hessians, which is uh, inconvenient and potentially expensive. When we want to evaluate exact, exact gradient of this multi step mammal objective, this can be like borderline non-feasible because like uh, it will, uh, it, it depends on Hessian, on the third derivative and so on and so forth, which flows. Even when we want, to, if we want to uh, implement it um, automatically using uh, some uh, autograd options, the memory requirement is just too high for it to be practical. However, uh, all of uh, these uh, issues with computing uh, gradient of uh, meta function can be circumvented by performing first order approximations. Uh, so a first order approximation of 
mammal objective um, is done by algorithm called FO mammal, first order mammal. And this algorithm is very important in practice. So uh, this algorithm is used, widely used, not only in meta learning, but also in other fields as continuous optimization, online learning, and many other fields. Uh, fun fact, like uh, to this day, uh, it has over 8,000 citations on Google Scholar, which indicates that it is really important in practice. Uh, let's so summarize what we what we are talking about about meta functions uh, in a table. Oh, pardon, pardon me. Uh, let's, uh, let's first talk uh, talk about what we will do next in this paper. Uh, in this paper, we will show uh, we will discuss the convergence of first order memo, and we will show that uh, it it can uh, that it solves the moral envelope objective and with faster rate than it solves mammal objective. Uh, this indicates that first order mammal uh, sh should uh, be, well, can probably be considered as a solver of moral envelope uh, as opposed to this mammal objective. So uh, here uh, we present a table of meta learning algorithms together with their objective. We already talked about mammal objective, which uh, which uh, fine tunes by performing a single gradient descent step. We already talked about multi-step mammal algorithm, which uh, which takes s gradient steps. Uh, starting from point X on the function fi. We, and we already uh, talked about more envelope objective. In columns three and four, we list what, what are the proper optimization properties of our meta loss function. And as we can see, most of these meta loss functions doesn't preserve neither smoothness nor convexity. In the columns five to seven, we talk about properties of algorithm. Ideally, we would like our, our algorithm uh, to avoid working with Hessians, avoid inverting matrices, for it is expensive. And as we are in federated learning, and we would like our algorithm to, uh, to be able to perform multiple local steps on clients so that uh, we can do uh, more work in between communication and reduce communica co communication that way. Algorithm that, uh, that we are going to present, uh, we are going to present algorithm that uh, that is first order and doesn't uh, work with Hessians nor inverts matrices and can do arbitrary number of local steps and doing more local steps will improve accuracy of the model. Are there any questions regarding uh, objectives or what do we want to what like what are the properties of our algorithms that we want to have? There's a question from Michal, let me unmute him. Uh, uh, hello again. Uh, I just wanted to ask if we consider alpha zero to be uh, like a special case uh, which considers no personalization across devices? Uh, 
we haven't considered this special case, but we can see that uh, that here in this mammal objective or this multi-step mammal, if we set alpha zero, then the this personalized model uh, will be the same as meta model, and thus we will recover exactly HGD. Uh, sorry, we will ex recover exactly empirical risk minimization problem. When uh, uh, in, in this uh, more enveloped objective, if we, uh, we cannot send, send alpha to zero because this will, like we are dividing by alpha, but for infinitesimal alpha, uh, we will also have this, the case that X exists, well, that this uh, met meta models uh, X exists are the same as personalized models. I, I see. Do, do we have an existing relation between alpha and how personalized the the problem is? Because I don't quite see how this uh, this uh, uh, regularization term how badly it influences the performance on a uh, personalized device, like on a client, because it influences ah, so, a little bit. So you mean that like uh. Yes, that uh, if we change alpha, that uh, how much does do we change the performance on client I or like uh, accuracy on the prediction yeah. on client I? Yeah, how do we? Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, when when could, like if you want to speak about it, like uh, like um, it would be nice to have experiment uh, for that, comparing exactly this, uh, but we don't have it in the paper. Uh, like the the issue uh, with this, like it's a, it's a really good question, but like uh, when we were like running uh, the experiments for our uh, for the paper, uh, we were running it on the neural networks and mini ImageNet and so on, like a big scale, and for that uh, it was uh, these things are like. Where it needs to be like very well fine fine tuned these hyperparameters, and uh, like not choosing alpha to be too big or too small like led to performance decrease. Sorry, accuracy decrease. I see. I see. It makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, like it. Like it. Like in order to work well, like you really need to like fine tune. What is the level of your personalization? And like in like also like for these experiments, like when we look at other papers, uh, for example on on other algorithms, for example this mammal, like uh, really like re uh, really tunes hyperparameters of of their algorithm, and uh, in in uh, when when they run it, they also like uh, use like different amount of local steps on uh, during training and testing and many other tricks. So it's like quite hard to extract the importance of one single, of, of this, exactly this single parameter. If it makes sense, what I said. Yeah, yeah thank you. It answers the questions, thank you. Yes, maybe I would have one uh, quick one. Uh, so for your alpha right here, so, so so since you're using like kind of a same alpha everywhere, is there uh like is this kind of alpha equivalent here? For instance, in let's say if you optimize quadratics or something, is there any equivalence that, or is is there any scenario where these problems are equivalent, or no, that the solution is the same? Uh the solution is the same because i understand like the like edge cases are kind of the same right like the the zero is no personalization if you uh if you have yes. a limit to zero while uh infinity uh would be okay at least for uh for your full model uh it would be essentially uh only local model right but the is there any relationship like in, in any special cases is kind of the alpha 
equivalent or like the, the, the type of the objective equivalent to any objectives that you list here? Uh, so uh, the way uh, how I'm seeing your question is that uh, whether there is a setup where like different like different personalized models are the same. Yeah, so, 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 so essentially whether like the objective is kind of the same that you optimize. I mean, of course, yes, like, like uh, if, meta mini like, batch uh, proxy is kind of the if, same. Yeah. If, if we change alpha, yes, then like we will get like deep, different met, meta function. But and uh, like if I understand correctly, your question was whether like this, uh, this uh, personalized model that it is like in, in the bracket mm -hmm. is, is the can be same for different different objectives. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of like if you solve, let's say, given alpha, you solve mm -hmm. uh, mammal and you solve your FO mammal, whether it can lead to the same uh, solution or not. That's a uh, so special interesting question, but I cannot answer it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. No worries, yeah, thank you. And yeah, so there are no other questions in the chat. Uh, no raise hands, so, so we can continue. Okay, so if uh, the, uh, the, the, our objective that we are going to, uh, to focus on is clear, and if the properties, desired properties of our algorithms are clear, uh, we can go to algorithms. Uh, we analyze convergence of first order mammal to the moral envelope objective. And first order mammal, uh, as listed uh, right here, has inner and outer loop. In the out outer loop, it form performs HGD step on the, on the data loss function based on gradient evaluated at personalized model. And in the inner loop, uh, it uh, computes a personalized model from meta model. Uh, for simplicity, we will assume that uh, our function, the data function fi, is smooth and strongly convex, and that in each iteration we will sample a, a set of tasks of same cardinality. Or in uh, federated learning terminology, that the cohort is of the same size in each step. With this, we can prove following convergence rate. In this convergence, uh, on on the right hand side, we have initial error term and a noise term. Noise term is proportional to the variance of meta function in in the optimum. Alpha and uh, beta are step sizes from the algorithm, and alpha uh, alpha is cannot really be tuned as is it as it was fixed in the objective. Uh, in order to understand the rate, we can compare it to SGD. Uh, uh, um, that we will run. Okay, uh, sorry, <laughs> pardon me. Uh, I'm I'm skipping important parts. <laughs> uh, so uh, I haven't uh, mentioned what what is this delta parameter. Uh, delta parameter uh, represents how well does our uh, gradient of loss function that we are taking approximate approximate the gradient of Meta function. And uh, first order mammal satisfies this assumption with delta equal to alpha L squared. And uh, note that uh, the smaller delta is the better. If delta is zero, then we our gradient of data function at personalized model. Uh, exactly matches the gradient of the meta function at meta model. And in the outer loop, 
we are performing exactly HDD on the model envelope objective. The rate, uh, if we compare our rate to the HDD, uh, did run on the on the uh, model envelope objective, uh, which uh, is not implementable as uh, we cannot exactly compute the gradient of meta loss. Um, but uh, we we can uh, we can compare it to uh, to see uh, to explain the the rate of first order mammal. So both of algorithms uh, have this uh, initial suboptimality error that is uh, decreasing uh, linearly, and the, the the noise term that is proportional to the sigma star uh, one over mu star, and so on. But instead of uh, this beta of over tau in SGD. We have this bracket, and the the first term is exactly this beta over tau, and the second term depends on alpha and delta and all. Note that uh, the the nice property of SGD is that we can make convergence neighborhood as small as we want by decreasing step size, and uh. While uh, we can uh, decrease similar in, in first order mammal, we can decrease beta to decrease the first term, first part of this first term. Uh, we cannot really decrease alpha as it is in the objective. But uh, if we if we want to uh, if we want to uh, so this is the barrier. This is the convergent neighborhood. Well, this term like cannot really be uh, get rid of by first order mammal um, by the design of algorithm. So uh, this uh, like, um, so this raises the question that when the the better we can design algorithm that makes delta small. Arbit uh, like sm arbitrary small, so that we can uh, decrease our convergence neighborhood as much as we want. The answer is yes, and we can uh, we can the following algorithm de decreases delta as much as we want. It has delta as a parameter, and it has the same uh, inner uh, outer step as first order mammal, but instead of this uh, inner, inner inner loop of mammal, we just, uh, our algorithm somehow implicitly finds ZIK so that uh, it will approximate the gradient of meta function. And, it, and the, our assumption will be satisfied. Uh, note that there is slight discrepancy that uh, in line four, we are using this this term to approximate a gradient of meta function. Um, and in our assumption, we are using uh, this term to approximate gradient of meta function. But uh, for our objective, these two terms are approximately the same. So, uh, so if we can say that, okay, uh, we found algorithm that decreases delta arbitrarily, but we still have no way how to algorithmically decrease delta. Can we somehow uh, find smaller delta uh, uh, algorithmically? Ideally, we would like an uh, algorithm that, that doesn't decreases delta iteratively, and in each iteration, it will decrease it by a fraction. The answer is yes, we can very well do it. The next algorithm that we are going to present, we uh, will uh, 
will use S local steps and uh, it will cause delta to be of size alpha L to the S plus first power. Note that because alpha is smaller than one over L, then uh, this bracket is smaller than one and delta is actually decreasing in each iteration. So how will our algorithm look like? So our algorithm uh, will have the same out, uh, outer loop as previous algorithms. But um, in the inner loop, it will perform HGD like steps. However, the difference is that uh, it will uh, it will always take the gradient steps away from XK. And this uh, XK uh, is this uh, our meta model, and it will use the the next point that that he obtains to update the next gradient and so on and so forth. So the, the, the ZI uh, K that we end up with is one uh, gradient step away from XK, but the gradient that we took uh, is very, very, very refined. What rates does this algorithm achieve? So it satisfies assumption with delta equal to alpha L to the S plus first power. And it uh, achieves following convergence rate. Note that now we can decrease the noise term arbitrarily as we have control over beta and number of steps S. So uh, this algorithm introduced new parameter S, the number of local steps. And note that when S is one, we recover exactly first order model. If S is larger than one, then uh, we get uh, we, we, we get smaller delta and we are getting the better approximations of, uh, of gradient of meta loss. And uh, this will lead to smaller convergence neighborhood. And when S, in limit case where S is infinity, we get that we exactly uh, we we can exactly uh, appro approximate oh, well our gradient of uh, that we are using in outer loop exactly approximates a gradient of meta loss. So we are performing the exact HGD. What can we take away from it? What are the insights? First is that algorithm that we proposed interpolates between HGD and first order mammal. And uh, for that reason, first order mammal can also be viewed as a version of HGD. So uh, this. Uh, to summarize, uh, these are the all things that uh, we are going to talk about uh, in this talk. Uh, to summarize, uh, what are the novelties of the paper? Well, uh, we we show uh, like view, like alternative viewpoints of first order mammal. We show that uh, it can be viewed as solver of more enveloped objective, and it can be viewed as a variant of SGD. Also, we propose multi-step generalization that probably improves performance. And also, uh, the, the convergence analysis that we, uh, that we present is novel. OK, uh, that would be it from the talk. Time for questions. Okay, just, just a quick reminder, if you have questions, please do raise your hand or just post a, a question to the chat and then I'll try to unmute you. Yeah, let me start uh, when 
people are thinking about questions. Let me start with a couple. So first, uh, for your algorithm 10, uh, could you maybe give a bit more intuition why the inner loop uh, makes sense, uh, the way it designed? Well, uh, I think that the best technical intuition is that those are the steps that uh, that helps approximate solution of proximal operator. And uh, well, this uh, <laughs> well, if we do uh, infinitely infinite amount of such steps, we get solution of uh, proximal operator. So this is the intuition behind it. And also, uh, do you have uh, like any experiments that? Uh, even or, or not in the talk. Uh, and then how does that so so how does this perform in, in in practice comparing to like previously proposed methods? Because this seems to be like uh, being more exact. So does it perform better than like let's say standard MAMA? Well, um, yes. Uh, so comparing it uh, in practice to standard MAMA is very tricky for uh, numerous reasons. Well, one thing is. Uh, what I mentioned that like uh, the original MAMO uh, uses like uh, a lot of uh, tuning of hyperparameters that they are also using like multiple steps uh, in the inner loop and the number of uh, number of uh, steps are changing. The uh, the other uh, other change that they are doing is that uh, when performing this outer loop. Instead of taking AGD step, they take ADAM step. So, like with all of the like with uh, such changes and all of these changes, it's like super tricky to interpret the uh, to compare those. And well, uh, we we don't have any uh, nice figures or any any figures that can be well interpreted. <laughs> like uh, we tried to. Uh, to exchange uh, their inner loop for our inner loop, and uh, we didn't see any performance. Uh, first order mammal showed uh, it showed a better performance, but well, again, we didn't uh, really spend. We didn't do uh, extensive uh, hyperparameter search, so it's hard to say. And uh, and it's also tricky because uh, this first order mammal and meta learning or first order mammal in, in especially is very sensitive. Uh, very is very sensitive that when you run like the same method multiple times, you can get like diametrally different results. Yeah, and is it the case for your method? Or does it behave at least more stable? Well, when we tried uh, to mimic mimic it uh, to be able to compare first order mammal, our method was sensitive as well. Okay. And on the simple tasks, that, that does it work better or not? Like uh, let's say on like more like a quadratics where you know solutions or something like uh, something simpler where you can actually like kind of know the solution exactly. Well, we haven't tried running it on on this simple uh, simple model. We try right, to so uh, I... co compare it it in 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 situations where it is used in practice. And then there's a raised hand by Michal, so please go ahead. Uh, I uh, I have a question about assumptions a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. At one point, uh, you talk a little bit about the approximation. Could you elaborate what, when at which in which algorithm the assumption is satisfied exactly, and uh, if it's sometimes satisfied only approximately? Uh, well, we are using uh, essentially. Well, we are from assumptions. We are like we were mentioning uh, smoothness and strong convexity, and uh, when Data loss functions are 
smooth and strongly convex. Then also our like Moro envelope flows is smooth and strongly convex. But also uh, even like we can leave out, I think that like for certain, like uh, we can leave out also like, I think that strong convexity, we can have just convexity. And uh, with that, like for certain values of alpha, uh, we can show that the objective is still uh, strongly convex and smooth. So like these things also depends on value of parameter alpha that uh, let me open, sh sh show this. That when we look at uh, the moral envelope formulation, uh, then uh, when alpha is small, then we have like a large regularization, which means that it has like nicer optimization properties, if it makes sense. Yeah, and yeah, one sense. more thing, one more thing, like we also assume that like the function is uh, proper and, and, and something else bounded, I think, yes in order for moral envelopes to make sense. And uh, uh, are there any other assumptions? Yes, so uh, this uh, this assumption uh, is in fact, uh, it's not really assumption, it's some kind of, uh, I would say that uh, condition to, or like lemma to obtain this final convergence rate. If we if we see that okay, uh, if we can quant quantify how much our inner loop will is uh, approximated this meta functions gradients of meta functions, then we can get the rate. I see, and we can satisfy this uh, by running the inner loop in algorithm then. Yes. I see. Uh, as we can see, like this uh, other algorithm has delta equal to this guy mm -hmm. in green. Mm -hmm. I see, thank you. That answers the question. Mm -hmm. 